Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about stress, burnout, something that I know all too well and in the last few months I've been trying to really avoid it and I'm basically going to share with you today the tips that I use to avoid stress, avoid burnout. And now more than ever it is a stressful time, you know, we've got online coursework, online exams, online lessons and it feels like we still have all the work that we might have, but there's no outlet, there's nowhere we can go. It's not like we can go, you know, see our friends, have a drink, or go to the gym or have a change of scenery that might sort of alleviate some of the stress. So I know if some people might feel like it's more stressful than it normally would be. So that's why I wanted to put this video out and hopefully some of these tips will help you feel less stressed. One of the most important things about avoiding stress and burnout is to know the signs, to know when you're feeling stressed, when you might be burnt out. So I'm gonna read out some of the signs because everybody is different. You might think that you're okay, but there's little things that might crop up in your life that are the tell signs of when you're feeling stressed. Having a negative or critical attitude, dreading starting work, having low energy, trouble sleeping, which is my biggest one, I literally get insomnia, being absent from like doing work or like not wanting to do work, feeling empty, I get that quite a lot to be fair, having physical ailments such as like headaches, back aches, joint aches. I always get headaches when I get stressed, so, <laughs> and acne. Those are the two things I get, so we love that. Being irritated easily, having thoughts that the work that you're doing doesn't really make a difference, so you just think, oh, I can't be bothered, like, what? what's the point of it really? What's the purpose? Like, does it even matter? Things like that. Pulling away from people emotionally and not wanting to really like to mix or be socializing with people. Thinking of just like quitting work or like dropping out of uni or whatever. And blaming others for your mistakes. So you might sit there and think, oh God, my uni is so like awful uh, for something that's happened to you. Or like, oh, I just I can't study, can't do anything because it's other people, it's not you. They're like the telling signs of when stress is like there or when you're like approaching a burnout. So they're things to look out for really. The tips I'm about to share you can use if you are stressed, are burnt out, or if you feel like you're going to be, or just flat out want to avoid it, which is the boat that I'm in. So first off, the most obvious ones, there are multiple parts to you as a person. You've got the mental, you've got the physical, and then you've also got like the emotional. So to look after the physical, work out. Whether it's just going for a walk around the block, I know we're on lockdown, I know it's not ideal, but you can still go for your daily walk or you can go for a little bit of a run. It doesn't matter whether you're a runner or not. If you know you do a couple hundred meters, you do a couple of miles, getting out there, having some fresh air really does improve your state of mind. And even if it's just home workouts, there are literally so many out there for free that you can do. Just get down in your living room, do some sit-ups, whatever it may be. You don't have to be working out to think, I'm gonna be a bodybuilder, I'm gonna be like the next fitness guru. You can just do it to think, oh, you know, it makes me feel better. I know for me, any, any exercise that I do just completely flips my mind. I can go into a workout and be really unmotivated and think, God, I really don't wanna do this, I can't be bothered at all. And within five, 10 minutes of doing that workout, I'm like, yeah, I feel so pumped up and it's like such an attitude change. So I think it's really important to have that. Also stay hydrated, eat healthily. At the same time, sleep well. That's a really big thing for me. Like I feel like when I've got a lot of work to do, sleep is kind of like my last priority. I always think well, I've got all my work to do, so if I miss on sleep, it's not important. But it is because then you wake up the next day and you feel rotten and then it just delays like the work that you're going to do. I've learned as I've gotten older that it's more important to go to bed early, wake up early because then you'll be more productive when you wake up rather than staying up late because the amount of work you would do when you're tired isn't as much as you do when you're wide awake, if you know what I mean? Yeah, and also like go to bed at appropriate hours. I make the effort of just trying to go to bed before like 10 or 11, because if I go to bed after midnight, I literally need like twice as much sleep and I'm not a morning person anyway. <laughs> so I literally am trying everything in my power to wake up in the morning and feel semi-decent. And also on the topic of like your body is meditation. I'm not the type of person that's like, oh, I'm, I, med I meditate, I sit there at 6 a.m. and I get my, I sit outside with my, green tea and meditate that's not me but I do like to meditate what do you know I have the calm app they have like a daily calm on there um I like to just do it whether it's first thing in the morning last thing at night lunch time when I need a bit of just like a refresh they're like 10 minutes you basically just sit there deep breathing and honestly it completely flips your attitude and makes you just really reconnect with yourself and it completely revitalizes me for the next portion of my day so I completely recommend the app I think even when you're really really stressed just doing a couple of minutes of deep breaths completely helps that alleviate that stress and carrying on this topic also generally just to avoid 
unhealthy habits. So obviously we've really touched on food, like don't eat unhealthy food. I know we're all guilty for it. I love a pizza, I love a bit of chocolate. But if I eat like that all the time and don't have like a good healthy diet, it makes me feel so sluggish. It makes me feel so like just unmotivated where eating healthy really does like improve the way I feel. And it's the same with like drinking, if you smoke, like smoking. Like for me with drinking, I don't really drink anyway, to be honest. I probably have a drink like once a month, if that. But I notice that when I do drink, again, I feel really, really sluggish the next day and it just completely like dulls down my mood and I like to wake up and feel like as energetic as I possibly can. And now for the mentor, I find that talking to people actually really helps. So I often like ring up my parents or ring up my friends and speak to them. And even if it's just to talk through with them, like what you've been up to or about something completely random or whether you actually want to sit there and say like, I'm really struggling, I'm a bit stressed out and have a chat about it. And if you feel like you don't have anyone that you could talk to, there are loads and loads of like lines that you can ring. I'll put some of the links in, uh, below for like Samaritans and things like that, where if you just want to chat with someone, there are loads of you know resources out there where you can do that. And I think that a five minute conversation with someone to really sit there and think about how you feel, why you feel that way, reflect on it, and then what are you going to do moving forward really does help. And this leads me on to my next point, which is to take control. I know that might seem like a bit of trite advice, but I think when you sit there and really look at your problems, you realize that you might not be as proactive as you think you are. When I feel stressed or when I feel like, oh, you know, like, what am I gonna do? I always sit there and I think, okay, what am I stressed about? Are these things I can change? Are these things I can't change? If you can't change it, you've just got to accept it or you've got to figure out a way where you can get to a place where you can change it. If you can change it, great. How can you change it? What can you do? It may seem like a big thing, okay? Like there are a lot of little things that you could probably do that would help you get to that big thing. So it's about figuring out what you don't like, what you do want, and then how you can get there. And I think when you really break it down like that, it makes you realize that you can be taking proactive steps today to change your future of what you want. That will in itself alleviate some stress because you're making moves to go in that right direction to get what you want. Look at me, I feel like a motivational speaker, but it's true. You know, there's a lot of things in my life where I think, oh, I'm really unhappy about this or that or whatever. And then I sit there and I think, okay, where do I wanna be? What do I want? How can I get there? And then I get a plan in place and I break it down to the point where I think, this week, this month, I wanna achieve X, Y, Z. Next month, the same again. And in six months time, I'm gonna be where I wanna be. And having that plan and having that goal and purpose to get to where you wanna go, really, really does alleviate a lot of stress because it feels like things are actually in your control. And I know now, you know, that's more difficult to do than it might have been before because there's a lot of uncertainty going on. But at the same time, you can sort of say, you know, if I wanna be in a certain place in a year, well, I need to do all of these steps and how many can you actually do now in lockdown? Because you might find that there are some that you can do in lockdown. Yes, there might be things that need to wait until after lockdown, but if you have a list of them ready to go, ready to tackle when lockdown lifts, then you're already one step ahead. And also be organized. So the things that you want to do, the things that you have to achieve, whether you're at university and you've got deadlines, you might have X amount of essays coming up and then you've got exams and it might feel overwhelming and you might feel stressed out. This was me in my second year of university. I literally had like, I think it was like 12, 15, I don't know, loads of assignments basically that I had to do. It was about two a week. Then I had like a few days off and then I had exams. It was awful time and it really did feel like I was so overwhelmed that I had no time for me, no time to sleep, eat. It was just like one thing after the other. And that really, really did stress me out. But the way that I tackled that was I sat there and I thought, what do I have to do? Right, I've got these, these essays that I need to do. What needs to be done for each essay? How long will that take? Penciled that into my diary. And then I basically blocked out my time to say, right, this month I'm gonna spend, you know, days one, two, and three on X task four, five, six on Y task. And when you block it out like that and see it all laid out and think, this is what I'm gonna do this month. And by this date at the end that you set, do you think I'll have everything done that I wanna get done? It's basically just giving you purpose for your work and it gives you a good schedule to stick to. And equally, you've got to be realistic. You might've gotten to a point where you have a lot of work to do and you might wanna say spend five, six days on an essay, but you only have three days in the politest way, sometimes you just gotta deep it and you've gotta think, well, I've got three days. I'm gonna put three days of my best effort into it and then we move on because it's better to like do all of your essays to the best standard that you can at that time rather than do like four or five to a really great standard than four or five to like a really, really like, shit standard so it's just about maximizing your time as much as possible having a plan in place so when you wake up every morning you go 
right, I know what I'm doing today, I know what I need to achieve today, and then you just crack on with it. And then finally, once you've done a whole hard day of work and you think, God, you know, I just need a break, have one, you know? Having a break, honestly, is really important part of not getting stressed. And it's also about having a break, but not thinking about the work you have to do. A lot of the times in the past when I was really stressed, I would have breaks, but the whole time I'd either be like on holiday or just like having an afternoon for Netflix or whatever it was, I'd be sitting there like thinking about the work I've got to do. I'd be literally on nights out thinking, how am I gonna structure that paragraph, that essay, and da, da da da. And it's not having time off. You're not relaxing, but you're still thinking about the work that you have to do. So it's about having time off and truly like taking a step back and not worrying about your essay or whatever it is or the work that you have to do and just detaching yourself from it so that you truly can refresh. So when you come back to the work, you're on top form. And you know, in that break, whether you wanna do a bit of me time, self care, do a face mask, you know, have a long shower, steam your face have a little nap, eat the foods that you like, you know, talk to the people that you wanna to talk to, watch your favorite TV show, watch a film or a comedy show that's gonna make you laugh, do something that you're gonna enjoy so that you feel like you're actually doing something for yourself, something that is a break, something that's other than work. Because then you really do feel like your life has a bit more meaning than just, oh, I've got all of this work to do. And I think that really does help, you know, battle stress and battle burnout. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope some of these tips help. I've used these in my personal life for the last three, four years at university, especially at law school, when times have actually been quite tough and I feel like I'm on the brink of breakdown like every other week. But uh, yeah, and let me know if you have any other tips in the comments below, I'd love to hear them. I will see you on Saturday. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.